Okay, today is about rational exponents. We're going to be focusing on this uh, theorem right here with uh, the way rational exponents work. Um, before we do that here, we're just going to quickly revisit some of your exponent rules. If you have two things that you are multiplying, they have the same exact base, we say that we can add their powers up right there. Uh, if you're dividing, same idea except with division. Division kind of you know goes to subtraction of the exponents. You can also have this property here where you distribute in your um, exponents. This is like an exponent raised to another exponent. You take those and you multiply them. Um, same idea, I guess, with this one here. You can distribute your exponent in right there. And then uh, what else we got? Oh, negative exponents. That basically changes this into a fraction. You'll do the reciprocal of the fraction, 1 over, and then to the po positive power right there. And then last one is distributing in your exponent into the numerator and denominator of a fraction. And I think each of those we'll kind of look at a little bit. So uh, the big one we're focusing on today is writing roots with fractions and then vice versa. So right here, we call this thing right here the index right there. And then you have your power, I guess, m right there. So if you have something that's a certain type of root, you can put the index in the denominator of your fraction and then the power up uh, as a numerator right there. And then these are the same exact thing. So like, for example, if you have the cube root of x squared, you can write it like this right here. You can write that as x raised to 2 thirds right there. And actually, another way you can also do this here, sometimes you'll see it like this, where it's a cube root of x, and then it's all of this stuff squared. And it technically doesn't matter in the order that you do that in. So it's it's still the same thing as x uh, raised to 2 thirds right there. So just know that both of those are kind of the same exact thing. Okay, so first couple is just rewriting, I guess. So this first one here, we're going to write this as x. Your index always goes in the denominator. So that will be 4 in the denominator, so 3 fourths, I guess. So let's see what's going on with this one here. Now there's no index written. Remember, that's implied to be a square root. And also there's no power written, so the power is implied to be 1. So we're going to say this is the same thing as x raised to 1 half. And that's it there on that one. And I guess that's it on those types of problems. All right, but these uh, we're going to write in radical form, and then if it's possible, we're going to simplify them. So this right here is just going to be a square root here, since the index is 2. You don't have to write a 2. But then x to the fifth, you can write that inside. Or actually, you can write it as a square root of x, and then all of this stuff to the fifth. And these are technically both the same things. Most of the times, you'll probably see it like this over here to the left, but know that both of those are the same. Okay, next one right here, this is x raised to 1.5, which uh, in this case, I think they want us to convert 1.5 into a fraction. That'll be the fraction 3 over 2 right there. And then we will say that this is, I guess, a square root of x cubed right there. Okay, so sometimes convert those decimals into fractions. With this one here, this is 64 raised to 1 half, which is going to be the square root of 64. And then since this one here, we can actually simplify down. We're going to go ahead and do that there. So the square root of 64, that's going to just be regular 8. And yeah, that's about it there on that. 81 to the 1 fourth right here. So this will be a fourth root of 81 to the first power, which is just 81. And then today it's going to be kind of important to know all of your different roots. So... Uh, you know, if you want to make yourself a chart of all the perfect squares, the perfect cubes, the perfect uh, things to the fours power and everything like that, that might be helpful here. The fourth root of 81, in this case, is 3. So that would be a good one to know. Now, sometimes we'll get something like this right here where you have 11 raised to 1 half and then times 11 raised to 1 half. And our exponent rules up there at the top said if we have the same base, we can take these powers, if it's being multiplied, and we can add the two powers. So this is going to be 11 raised to a half plus a half, which obviously that's going to be 11 raised to 1, which we're just going to call that 11 and then be done. So add your powers on this one. 
Now remember, when you're adding fractions, you need a common denominator. So uh, some of them might have common denominators, some of them might not. So like with this one here, I guess this is the fourth root of two times the fourth root of eight. Notice here they, they don't have the same base right here. And there's a couple of approaches that we can do for this one here. But what I would do here is actually convert both of these to fourth roots. So we'll say this is a fourth root of two. Whoops, and that's not equal to, and then do the fourth root of eight. Okay, because then from our, I believe, 9.1 lesson, maybe it's 9.2, one of those lessons there we talked about, if you have two things inside and they have the same index, you can actually multiply those together. And we'll say that is the fourth root of 16, which comes out to two. So there you go. That page isn't too bad there on that right there. So you're just converting forms. <coughs> Yeah, I guess some with division and multiplication going on here. So these are different types of indexes right here. Notice that. So this one here, we can't really multiply, but let's switch forms. Let's say that this is 6 raised to the fraction 1 fourth, and then times 6 raised to the fraction, I guess, 1 third, using both of the indexes right there. Okay. Now, what we need to do is add your fractions here since they have the same base. We need to figure out what one fourth plus one third is going to be. And then back from middle school, you talked about getting a common denominator. We'll multiply the top and bottom here, I guess, by uh, the common denominator is 12. So let's multiply top and bottom by 3 here for this first one. That would be 3 over 12. And then the second fraction, we need to multiply top and bottom by 4. So that would be 4 over 12. And then remember when adding fractions, you add the numerators up. So that'd be 3 over 4, or 3 plus 4 right there, which is 7 over 12. So then we're going to write this as 6 raised to 7 over 12. Or I can't remember if the instructions want it in radical form using exponents. Rewrite using rational exponents. So they want this in exponential form. So we're just going to leave it as 6 raised to 7 12 or 7 over 12, and that's it there. Okay, so once again, to add fractions, get a common denominator. Okay, we got one here that's using division, and since these both don't have the same index, we can't really do much with that right now. So let's write this as 4 raised to the fraction 1 sixth, and then times, or actually it's divided by, divided by 4 raised to the 1 third. And then since we're dividing here, we need to subtract our powers. We need to go off to the side and do 1 sixth minus 1 third. Now the common denominator here in this case is going to be 6. So we'll multiply top and bottom by 2. That would be 1 over 6 and then minus, I guess, 2 over 6. Okay, and that will be negative 1 sixth or raised to negative 1 sixth. Okay. And then, uh, actually, most of the times they don't want us to leave negative exponents, so we're going to change this. We're going to use the power rule. If I can go up here, that if you have a negative exponent, you write this thing as a fraction. It's basically the reciprocal. So I guess we're going to write this as 1 over 4, and then raised to the 1 sixth power. And then this would be fully in exponential form. There's not a whole lot of simplification that you can do with that. Okay. Next one, kind of the same idea. You have different indexes here. So I guess we're going to write this as 3 raised to the 1 half, and then times 3 raised to the 1 fourth. And I guess we're going to go and add our powers up. So we need to do a half plus a fourth. Well, that first fraction you can write with a common denominator if we multiply top and bottom by 2. So that'd be 2 over 4 and then plus 1 over 4. Obviously 3 over 4. So we'll write this as 3 raised to 3 fourths. And then that's it. Okay, last one here is another division problem. Different indexes. So we'll just write this as um, 3 halves right here for this first one. And then I guess we're dividing. If you want to still write it as a fraction, I guess you can. Then this will be raised to 2 thirds, I guess. And then we got to subtract our powers since it's division. 
Okay, so then three over two, and then minus two thirds. A common denominator in this case, I believe is six. So we'll multiply by three over three, and then the second one we'll multiply by two over two. It's a bad looking two there, oh well. So that's nine over six, and then minus four over six. And then once you reduce, that'll be five over six. So we'll write this as x raised to five over six. That is an exponential form, so that is all done. Okay, now a lot of problems that we're also gonna see is simplifying uh, using your exponent rules, but sometimes um, we're gonna try and simplify these without a calculator. Technically, you could just type into your calculator 16 raised to the fraction three over four, uh, but we're gonna focus on doing these without a calculator today. So what I want to do first here is actually write this as a fourth root here. We're going to write this as a fourth root of 16 cubed. Now as, the, as far as the order, um, as far as writing it here, this is going to make kind of a difference, I guess, because one way is going to be much easier than the other here. So if I write it like this right here, as a fourth root of 16 cubed right here, this right hand side is going to be a little bit easier here because we can actually do the fourth root. That would actually be the easiest to do. If I don't have a calculator, I don't know what 16 cubed is. Some of you guys might, but I sure don't. So what we're going to do is do the fourth root over here on the right side of 16. We know that's 2. And then we're going to go and do 2 cubed. Okay, and then that would get us 8. Now, if you wanted to get real fancy and go figure out 16 cubed, I guess uh, that's telling me here 4,096 right there. And then I guess we would do the fourth root of that, and that would get us 8. So over here on the right-hand side is how I want you guys to do this, especially if you don't have a calculator. So right-hand side there, write it like this, and then these problems will be much easier. Okay, let's try another one out here. So you got a negative fraction. So you got, um, I guess in this case, the fourth root. Or no, not no, that's going to be the fifth root of that number right there. So that's your denominator. But then you got the negative. So I, I guess you can make it into a fraction first and then do everything. Or if you want to figure out the number and then make it into a fraction, which I think is a little bit easier here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise this. I'm going to write this as, I guess, um, the fifth root of 32, whatever that number is, and then I'm going to raise that to the negative fourth. So the fifth root of 32, that's going to be 2 right there. And then we need to do 2 raised to the negative 4, which is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive fourth. And 2 to the positive fourth is 16, so we're going to write this as 1 over 16. And then that's going to be your full answer there. So just don't forget, negative exponents should make fractions, usually, unless it's already a fraction. Okay, let's see what's going on here with this one. 9 raised to negative 3 over 5. So when I see that, I think um, we need to change this negative 3 and a half to a, a fraction. I think that's the same fraction as 7 over 2. But then it's negative. And then I guess we're going to go and figure out here, uh, we'll write this as the square root, which you don't need to write that to, of 9, and then raise that all to negative 7 there. Okay, so then that'll be 3, and then raise to negative 7. This one's a little bit bigger than I actually know, so I'm going to use my calculator here for this one. 3 raised to the 7th. It's apparently 2,187, and that's probably a little bit bigger than you're going to be expected to know without a calculator. So since three over seven, or three raised to seventh uh, to the seventh power is 2,187, and we have the negative exponent, we're going to just make that into a fraction. So we'll write this as one over 2,187 like this right here, because of the negative exponent, and then that's how you do that one. Okay, next one here. Looks like you got x raised to two thirds, but then you're got the uh, negative three right there, I guess. So what we need to do with this power here is, I guess, distribute it. So that's going to make x raised to negative. I guess if you distribute there, that's going to be negative six over three, which actually comes out to x raised to negative two. Okay, and then x raised to negative two. Well, that's got to be a fraction. 
It's going to be 1 over x and then squared. Right there. That's probably the best way to handle that one. Remember when you're multiplying, our, our rule for this is if you have a power raised to another power, you, you multiply. And then don't forget with multiplying fractions, multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together. And that's how I got the negative 6 over 3. Okay. So if we can uh, handle one here with some variables, you do have a power to distribute here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's not just x to the 15th raised to the negative 1 third. You have to distribute this power to both things here. So this is going to be 8 raised to the fraction negative 1 third, and then times x. And then if you, you, if you, if you do 1 third, I guess, of 15, that'll be x raised to the negative 5th. So since these both have negative exponents, these both have to go in the denominator of a fraction. This will be the same thing as 8 raised to 1 third, and then x to the positive 5. Right there. Now 8 to the 1 third, that's the same thing as 8, and then you're doing the cube root of that. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So this final answer here is going to be 1, and then 2, and x to the 5th. That'll be it right there. So distribute your powers. If you have negative powers, change it to a fraction. Put those things as positives in the denominator. And then we did the uh, cube root of 8 on that one. Okay, let's see what's going on here on this one. Um, with this one here, this might be a good idea to either write everything in terms of you know, powers, you know, written as fractions or change like this whole thing into, you know, square root of that stuff cubed. I think it's going to be easier if we start out with this one here. We'd write this as y raised to the fraction, I guess, one fourth. Okay, so there's all that here. Let me tighten that up. Okay, and then we're going to raise that to the fraction three over two. And then I guess what I want you to do here is distribute that in. And then, so that'll be 9 raised to 3 over 2. That'll be x raised to 3 over 2. And then this will be y, and then I guess multiply across, so that'd be 3 over 8. Right there, so this one's actually pretty nasty looking here. So I guess we're going to have, you know, x, and I guess we're doing a square root of that, square root of x, and then cubed. Um, we can do the square root of 9, but then we're going to cube that number, I guess. And then you're going to have the eighth root of y cubed. Now, the square root of 9 cubed out here in front, square root of 9 is, is uh, 3, and then 3 cubed is going to be 27. So I think we're going to go 27. Uh, I guess if you wanted to get fancy here with the x's, you have three x's total and you're doing a square root right there so that'll be x square root x and then your final thing here you're looking for groups of eight and you don't have any groups of eight with the y's right there so this is just going to be the eighth root of y cubed right here and I guess this is how you can write it so that one's obviously didn't it didn't really simplify down that well that's how you do that problem right there. Okay. Um, let's see what's going on here with this one. I guess we got one uh, where you got the same bases, so we can take your fractions, we can add them up. So I need to figure out 2 over 7 plus 3 over 14. And uh, let's get a common denominator. This one's a little bit more straightforward, I guess. That'll be 4 over 14, and then plus 3 over 14. Once you add that, that actually adds up to 7. Oh, whoops, I didn't write 14, right? That'll add up to uh, 7 over 14, which actually simplifies to 1 half. So this is the same exact thing as x raised to 1 half, or I guess you can write this as a square root of x. So either one of those there. I can't even remember if they wanted exponential. They didn't really say what form to leave it in, so... I would probably just leave it like this right here. All right, last one here. Uh, this one's a little crazy here because you got some addition and subtraction here. So I guess you got 
or actually not even addition. Yeah, you're not gonna do any adding of powers here. Look at your common bases here. So since these both have x's here and you're dividing, you're gonna subtract these two fractions. We're gonna go one half and then minus the fraction three fourths. Our common denominator in this case would be two. Or I'm sorry, it'd be four. You gotta multiply by two. Okay. When you do that there, that's negative one-fourth. So that's x raised to negative one-fourth here. Let's go and see what's going on here with the uh, y's. No. And then we got negative one-third. And then I guess we're going to subtract one-half. And these, you would need a common denominator of six. So we need to multiply top and bottom of this right fraction by three, and top and bottom by two. So this will be negative 3 over 6. This simplifies down to negative 5 over 6. Right here. So this would be y, negative 5 over 6. And then I guess since you have uh, negative powers, write it as a big fraction. And then x to the positive 1 fourth times y to the positive 5 over 6. That's probably one way you can leave your answer. Or if you want to go into radical form. I guess we'll go the fourth root of x and times the sixth root of x to the fifth. And then that will be your final answer there in this case. So that one kind of has a lot going on right there. Um, usually we don't put that many steps in one problem there, so don't, don't worry too much about that. Uh, I explain why this simplification is incorrect. I guess right here. You guys hopefully know that if you have parentheses, you really need to do those things first. So we need to do whatever, 4 minus um, 5 raised to 1 half. So what they did here, I guess they were trying to distribute the 5 right here. Uh, technically, you need to do parentheses and then exponents first. So you can't distribute. So that's what I would. Uh, that's how I'd explain it there to to someone. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's see here. The surface area s in square units of a sphere with this volume in cubic units is given by this equation right here. And then what's the surface area of a sphere with a volume of four thirds cubic miles? Okay. So. We're going to take this formula right here, and they give us the volume right here. So four-thirds, I guess, is going to go in right there. Mm -hmm. And then I guess for this one here, we can do pi raised to one-third, and then times six times v. So v was four-thirds. And then raise that all to two-thirds. And I guess technically you could just type this whole thing into your calculator here. Um, but we're going to see if we can simplify some of this without doing that for a second here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to. I do know um, right here a lot of people are going to want to distribute 6 in right there. Oh, but you know what? Actually, I wrote it wrong here, so it should have the parentheses kind of like this. So really, technically, since it's like that right there, we can do 6 times 4 thirds, which is basically 6 divided by 3 and then times that answer by 4. So I think that's going to come out to 8. So we'll have 8 raised to 2 thirds right there, which we can actually deal with that there. We can do the cube root of 8 and then square that answer. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is going to be 4. So I guess we're going to say the answer is 4 pi and then raised to 1 third right there. And that would be, I guess, the surface area. And then I guess this was in miles or something. Yep. So haven't honestly seen um, too many spheres and miles, but you know I guess maybe the the Earth. You could. That's a lot of miles there. But yeah, there you go. That is uh, the answer there. I guess the only other thing you could do different here is if you wanted to figure out, you know, what the cube root of pi is, I guess you could type that in your calculator, but probably either of those are going to be good. 
then uh, oh yeah and then actually the units here if it's surface area it's miles squared and i believe that is it here for today